Hey, Mr. Kaczynski here, working out of IXL's 8th grade skills. Section P is transformations and congruence. Today we're going to describe a sequence of transformations, so more than one transformation, mainly dealing with reflections, rotations, and translations. So, for instance, if we start with figure 1 here, how would we get it to figure 2 and then to figure 3? So, the first thing I'm seeing is a reflection of figure 1 over this red line here. So, um, maybe I could demonstrate that with some, some lines. If I connect corresponding vertices here, like that one to that one, or this one to this one, or this one to this one, okay, those are corresponding points that I'm connecting with those blue lines. All of those blue lines are cut in half by the red line uh, of reflection, and they all meet the red line of reflection at a 90 degree angle. So what I'll do is I'll take this figure, and I'll flip it. I don't have the ability to just flip it straight over that line using this program, but boom, I can get it right up there, okay? Let's get these out of the way. All right, then um, I'm gonna take these red lines and that's gonna show how figure two turning into figure three is a translation because all of those uh, points, those vertices, are moving the same distance in the same direction. All right, so what's our answer here then? It's a reflection, then translation. That's how it's going to show up in your answer when you're practicing this skill. A reflection, then a translation. All right, let's look at this one. So we have figure one, turn it into figure two, and then figure three. So I'm looking at figure one as a rotation around this point. So that's my center of rotation, that point. And then all the vertices would kind of follow uh, this similar pattern here. So let's show that. Um, I'll take this figure. I, I can't rotate around that point, but I can rotate it and then translate it. And you can see how it could have been done in just a single rotation if I could have rotated around that red point. Next, how do I fig turn figure two into figure three? That's going to be another reflection. And there's my line of reflection right there. Again, let's take these uh, blue lines and we'll connect some corresponding vertices. That one and that one. Um, and again, those blue lines are cut in half by that red line of reflection, and they meet the line of reflection at a 90 degree angle. So I'll take this and I'll flip it. I think that's right, yeah. And you can see how it's a reflection. A flip and a reflection are the same thing. So our answer then is a rotation, then reflection in this case. Moving on, um, all right, so we got figure one uh, and then figure three. So I'm looking at this first as a translation. You can see how all the corresponding points in figure one are gonna move the same distance in the same direction to create figure two. So if I just translate that right along those lines, creates figure two. So that's called the translation. And then to get from figure two to figure three, I'm going to reflect over this line right here. So another reflection, we've got a reflection each time and I'll show those blue lines that I've been showing every time. So maybe we connect these corresponding points, these corresponding vertices, these corresponding vertices. And again, all of those blue lines are cut in half by the red line of reflection, and um, they all meet the red line of reflection at a 90 degree angle. So let's reflect this or flip it, and then translate it over there. But really, that could have been done with just one reflection. So our answer here, what was done was that we did a translation then a reflection. All right, so this one's a little tougher to notice. Um, you might look at number one to two here and think, oh, that's a rotation because it's pointing a different way. Um, but really, 
that is a reflection. It's just that the reflection isn't a horizontal or vertical line, it's a diagonal line. So I think this is a good place for me to show those blue lines I keep showing. Um, if we connect corresponding points, like that point to that point, um, or this point to this point, those are all corresponding points I'm connecting with those blue lines. Those blue lines all meet the uh, red line of reflection at a 90 degree angle, um, and they're all cut in half by that line of reflection. So the first thing we've got there is actually a reflection. So, doo -doo -doo. which is going to be kind of weird to show because I'm actually going to have to do a reflection and then a rotation, but it could have been done with a single reflection. So that's a reflection over that line. line. I'm going to get these blue lines out of the way to cause a little less confusion. Uh, and then I'm looking at a rotation around what point? It looks like that point right there is going to be our center of rotation. And if we just take and rotate around this point, I've actually got my arrow going the wrong way, but um, so if I go right around that point, it's going to be in a circular fashion, an arc, you might call it, and it'll end up matching figure three right there. So our answer to this one is a reflection, then rotation. One more. <clears throat> All right, so figure one, um, I'm looking at a rotation again here. So where's my center of rotation? It's right there. Okay, and if we follow, we can follow multiple points, but easiest one to follow is probably that one right there. If it'll just rotate right around that point. So what's that look like when we're done? Obviously it looks like figure two, but I'm going to go ahead and rotate it. So there's a rotation. So that could have been done in a single rotation. Then to turn figure two into figure three, what do we have to do? And this one's going to be another one of these um, reflections that's over a diagonal line. So I'll throw those blue lines in. I keep showing because I think they're important to understand. Connect corresponding points, corresponding vertices. And you can see that all these blue lines meet the red line of reflection at a 90 degree angle. They're also all cut in half by that red line of reflection. So that is a reflection. So what I want to do is flip this one and then it should match here. Again, you can see me doing kind of a, oops, a rotation after I flip, but it could have been done with a just a single flip. All right, uh, so I gotta answer this one then. So that's gonna be a rotation followed by a reflection. Some of them are easier to see than others. All right, that should get you started on skill XPK in section P of IXL's 8th grade math skills.